Hi, Mom. What are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral. I'm your host, Sharon Rulier. Happy Mother's Day to all in our audience who are mothers, grandmothers, aunts, or any who have played a maternal role. As we do each Mother's Day, we will offer this liturgy for all the living and deceased women whose names you've submitted and will be placed before our altar this morning. Today we are also drawing closer to the end of the Easter season on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Our readings today center around Jesus and his disciples, establishing the church in a time and place that will most certainly reject them. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Jesus' disciples prayed to the Lord before, for guidance before selecting Matthias as the replacement for Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Then in our gospel reading, Jesus prays for all the disciples whom he loves. In between, John tells us that because God loves us, we must love one another in return. Jesus has shown them the way. The early Christian community has put it into practice, and now we are told to do the same. In so doing, as John says, God will remain in us. And joining us as our Mass celebrant is Father David O'Farrow, pastor of Holy Family Parish in South Deerfield. Father is also the scheduled main speaker at this year's Eucharistic Rosary Procession. He's joined at the altar by Deacon Daniel Pratz from St. Rose de Lima Parish, who also serves on the planning committee for the annual Eucharistic Rosary Procession. And we have other procession planning members in our congregation today, along with our music ministers, our very own Carolee McGrath, her talented daughter, Mary Kate, and they will be accompanied by Tom Fucci. Welcome to One and All. As we do each week, we send out our best wishes to all in our audience celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. A very happy birthday to Patricia Michella, a parishioner of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart here in Springfield. Patricia is celebrating her 90th birthday, and we send our best wishes to her on this very special occasion. And congratulations to John and Diane Jurskowski as they mark their 57th wedding anniversary this week. Best wishes for many more years of happiness. And congratulations go out to Father David Raymond, who is celebrating 35 years of priestly ministry. Father David is much beloved at each parish and school that he's ministered in, and we join them in celebrating this milestone. We're always also thinking of those of you who are ill or homebound, especially if you're watching from your hospital room, nursing home, or extended care facility. We are praying for you and all who care for your needs. And since we're taking today to celebrate our Mother's Day liturgy, we will not be running the Book of Remembrance today. Any names that may have been sent in for this week's list will be seen next Sunday when we resume our normal listing. After our Mass this morning, we'll see how plans are coming together for this year's Eucharistic Rosary Procession in Northampton. So please stay tuned to get all the details. Let us now enter into a spirit of prayer as we begin our liturgy for the seventh Sunday of Easter 
and honoring the special women in our lives. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in order for us to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were called to heal the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience as he promised until the end of the world his abiding presence among us who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood there, stood up in the midst of the brothers. There was a group of about 120 persons in the one place. He said, My brothers, the scripture had been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed to Judas called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic apost ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. 
Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. transgressions from reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel 
according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them were lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. And you sent me into the world so that I sent them into the world. And I consecrate my sam myself for them so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. I would like to first express my heartfelt, sincere thanks to mothers on Mother's Day. Thank you very much for your fiat, your yes, and your vocation of being a mother. I hope today is a special day for you as we celebrate Mother's Day this weekend. The phrase in the gospel that I'd like to lift up is, consecrate them in the truth. In the gospel today, we really get a glimpse of the heart of Jesus and the importance he has in placing his prayer with God the Father to consecrate us in the truth. When we say consecration, consecration is defined as an act by which a thing is dedicated to sacred use, or by which a person or thing is dedicated to the service and worship of God. The whole concept of truth these days is completely under attack. And here is Jesus asking the Father to consecrate us in the truth. The most basic definition of truth would be the conformity of the intellect with what the thing perceived actually is. This would be objective truth. The culture may want to take, make truth relative, and many are asking whether they are able to articulate this or not. They, they may say, what is truth? They may say things like, you have your truth, I have my truth. Or they may even say something that comes across as being completely innocent, like, you do you. Since the beginning, the beginning of the fall, this distortion of the truth comes into play, and as a result, many may be, may be confused, and here's this beautiful prayer, un unbelievably beautiful prayer that we have in the gospel. The Lord Jesus prays to the Father. We see this wonderful dialogue right in the gospel. The inner workings of the heart of Jesus are being expressed. And he prays that we be dedicated to the service and the worship of God. And God is truth. Two deaf devotions that we can really lift up today can help us to be consecrated in the truth. Wonderful consecrations we have the consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. If you are wondering, maybe a wonderful Mother's Day you can, gift you can give to the Blessed Mother is praying these consecrations to console the hearts of Jesus and Mary. First, I'd like to talk about the sacred heart of Jesus' devotion. In 1675, Jesus told St. Margaret Mary Alacoque that he wanted the solemnity of the sacred heart to be celebrated on the Friday after the Corpus Christi Octave. He also asked that Catholics receive Holy Communion on first Fridays of the month and adore him in the Holy Eucharist. Saint John Paul II the Great, a great devotee of the Sacred Heart said, this Sacred Heart has given us everything, redemption, salvation and sanctification. The Sacred Heart is the actual heart of Christ and also indicates his love for humanity. The Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 2669 says, the prayer of the church venerates and honors the heart of Jesus just as it invokes his most holy name. It adores the incarnate word and his heart which out of love for men he allowed to be pierced by our sins. And so this is a summary of the 
the devotion to the Sacred Heart. Next, I'd like to speak a little bit about the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It signifies, first of all, the great purity and the great love that the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary has for God. This purity is manifested in her yes to the Father at the Incarnation. Her love for and cooperation with the Incarnate Son in his redemptive mission and her docility to the Holy Spirit, enabling her to remain free from the stain of personal sin throughout her life. Mary's Immaculate Heart, therefore, points us to her profound interior life, where she experiences both joys and sorrows, yet always remains faithful. We celebrate the memorial of the Immaculate Heart of Mary immediately after the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. When we honor the Immaculate Heart, we give honor to Jesus. As we honor the Mother, we also honor the Son. In addition, the Blessed Mother is our Mother as well. St. Louis de Montfort said, if you put all the love of all the mothers into the one heart, all in the, all the world, it still would not equal the love of the heart of Mary for her children. Personally, I enjoy the quote from Maximilian Kolbe, St. Maximilian Kolbe, who is very devoted to Our Lady. I'm in the middle of a consecration to the Immaculate according to him. Look at me go. No, I'm kidding. Uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe says, never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. You can lev- never love her more than Jesus did. These two devotions are intensely human. The two hearts relate to each other from the servant of God, Lucia de Jesus, Rosa dos Santos, one of the Fatima vis- visionaries said, uh, she says this, I, just on a side note, I really love Fatima, in case you didn't know. The, the work of our redemption began at the moment when the word descended from heaven in order to assume a human body in the womb of Mary. From that moment, and for the next nine months, the blood of Christ was the blood of Mary. Taken from her immaculate heart, the heart of Christ was beating in unison with the heart of Mary. Also, Jesus himself appeared to Sister Lucia saying, he says, and I quote, I want my church to put the devotion to this immaculate heart beside the devotion to my sacred heart. This form of prayer is the effect of consecrating ourselves to the truth. When we do this, when we do these things, these devotions, it takes effect in us, it takes root. When we do this, we will be able to stand up like Peter in the first reading and preach to the brothers, strengthening them, when there was fear and doubt beset by them, like the apostles, we too are called to be Christ's witnesses. When we ourselves are beset with fear and doubt, we're called to go out and be Christ's witnesses. When we consecrate ourselves to the sacred and sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, we consecrate ourselves to the truth. We also make reparation for the time we fail, the time we don't get it right, and then creating an act that even if for a moment unites heaven and earth in our own lives, through the times we turn to God and then creating this moment because we love it so much that we create this moment for our secular culture. When we take the Eucharist, that we go into the streets with this love and there's something good, true, beautiful, and peaceful about processing in the streets with the Eucharist. Innately, we as a people, this is what we're called to. This is what we're drawn to. And this is what Jesus ultimately makes us for. This is what God makes us for. On June 2nd, the Rosary Procession in Northampton is an opportunity to do just that, to come together as a diocese, to be together, to stand together with Jesus, and we invite you to come on behalf of the children of Mary. And if you are not able to come, please pray for the event. Thank you very much, and happy Mother's Day. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We lift up our hearts in prayer, knowing that God cares about our needs, for God is love. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be one as God is one, unified as the body of Christ in proclaiming the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be consecrated in truth as Jesus prayed to his Father, striving to recognize and reject lies and half-truths. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who seek the living God, particularly those who recently have come to this community of faith, that their thirst may be satisfied. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are making the sacraments of First Communion and Confirmation, May they experience the faith and love this encounter with God through the gifts of the Eucharist and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers, grandmothers, and all those who have played or, pray, or are playing the role of mother to a child in thanksgiving for the nurturing love they have poured out for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Remember, we remember this day the living and deceased mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and maternal figures whose names were placed before our altar this day and those we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, consecrate us in your word, for your word is truth. Keep us one, as you and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, and with love grant the prayers we make, for you are love through our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Praise 
Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
never breathe We live for you Lord, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, hope in my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will fill my life The spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke whom we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And before we go our separate ways, I'd just like to say it was so wonderful to be with you. It was wonderful to come into your homes and to be with you in Holy Spirit Chapel. Uh, we wish you a wonderful and happy Mother's Day, and we hope you can come to, and join us in Northampton on June 2nd for the Eucharistic Rosie Procession. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. 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 And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds a victory. There's joy in the
On our life's journey, as we seek purpose and connection, we are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. For more than two decades, Catholic faithful have gathered in Northampton each June to give powerful witness to their faith with the annual Eucharistic Rosary procession throughout the streets of Northampton. Carolee McGrath was in attendance for last year's uplifting event and she prepared this story. Hundreds of people packed inside St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish in Northampton for the 21st annual Eucharistic Rosary procession. Father Valentine Nuora, parochial vicar at St. Bridget's in Amherst and assistant chaplain at the Newman Center, spoke before the procession. He focused his talk on the messages of Our Lady of Cabejo, who appeared to three young girls in the early 1980s in Rwanda. 42 years ago in Kibeho, 1981 to 1989, she repeated the same messages. And if you think of other Marian apparitions as well, it has always been messages of repentance, messages of prayer, messages of encouragement. Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament followed Father Nora's talk. The congregation then made an act of consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and to St. Joseph. Following petitions, the procession stepped off on King Street and wound through downtown Northampton. Once back in the church, children laid flowers before the statue of the Blessed Mother. The procession means a lot to me to bring Christ to the streets so that everybody can see them, can see him, even, even those non-believers or those, those that don't even know that he exists. The 
The congregation also sang the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Deacon Michael Forrest of Christ the King Parish in Ludlow served as the MC for the event. Many people, they, they get a chance for the first time to see Jesus in the midst. We believe that he's truly present in the Eucharist, that it's not just a piece of bread, but that in a unique way, it's the source and summit of our faith to bring Jesus into the community, I think is a way to bring light to let people know that Jesus is present there in their midst and to call them to him, that this is a way that he reaches people. Deacon Forrest is also involved in the recent launch of Fidelity Month by Princeton professor Robert George. Fidelity Month is a movement intended to call Americans of all faiths back to the founding principles in order to heal the nation. For hundreds of years, Catholics have also devoted June to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so with great faith, people publicly proclaimed their love for Jesus. And I'm joined by Father David O'Farrow, who is the pastor of Holy Family up in Deerfield, and also Deacon Mike Forrest, who's assigned to Christ the King. Thank you both for joining us today. Happy to be here. And we're talking about the 22nd annual Eucharistic Rosary Procession, diocesan-wide, up in Northampton. Uh, we've all been involved for many years. This is very, very exciting. Father David, I want to start with you, though, because you are the speaker this year. That's correct, yeah, happy to do it. And this is at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, up, that's where we start uh, the procession. Tell me a little bit about your talk. Uh, my talk, the title of the talk is called The Eucharist Will Make Me a Saint. And uh, I'm modeling it after the, uh, I don't know how much I wanna give away, but I'll, I'm modeling it after the uh, Marian consecration after St. Louis de Montfort. And doing that structure uh, with um, kind of combating the spirit of the world, developing a knowledge of self, uh, increasing our love for Mary and increasing our love for Jesus, and then uh, and then speaking a little bit about evangelization, and uh, and then after that we're going to be heading out into the streets of Northampton and processing with the Eucharist out in the streets of Northampton. So, Deacon Michael, you are a convert to the faith. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of impact do you think it has bringing Jesus out into the streets? Because some people might be like. Who are these loons? You know, they, they might not understand, but what, what sort of um, impact does that have? It's a good question. The first time that I went, I remembered, I, I wondered the same thing. How is this gonna be received up in Northampton? And I was surprised, uh, two things happened. First of all, I was amazed by the number of people that stopped and knelt uh, at the, the sight of our Lord going by. It was touching. Uh, but there were many people, I think, that they were just uh, in wonder. They wondered what was going on. And I think on a certain level, it's a wonderful kind of evangelization because uh, people are starving. Uh, they're starving spiritually and they don't even know what the, the food is that they need. And so to bring the bread of life in front of them, I think is a powerful thing in it that the Lord reaches them in those ways. And I think also not just people um, who are not Catholic and maybe who have not been catechized, but our own Catholics yes. sometimes or often, we know, don't understand the Eucharist and that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. How important is that for our own Catholics to come back to that understanding? Absolutely. I mean, we saw the, we've seen the polls about how many people have lost that, that part of their faith. And I think if you know and you understand that this is what the church has always believed, right from the very beginning. I mean, it's right in John 6, the fathers of the church talk about this. There was never any doubt about it. This is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And, you know, as a Protestant convert, as you know, we talk a lot about having a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, it doesn't get any more personal than receiving him, body, blood, soul, and divinity Actually, in the that's Eucharist. A great, that's a great point because you do hear that a lot. Tell me a little bit about uh, the number. Well, I know there's a lot of people that always attend. It's, it's always over 500 typically, and, and the numbers are even upwards of that. Um, how important is it to have all these people gathered in one place? We do the rosary. We do the chaplet um, in the afternoon. Uh, well, it, it's such a wonderful event uh, to just gather and have all those wonderful Catholics, wonderful people, uh, and even people who are just checking out to, to, to gather, to pray, to ask the Lord's blessing upon themselves, their families, Northampton, to even make a little bit of reparation, uh, that kind of thing, and hopefully even be inspired, uh, not only by the talk, but, but by the witness of the people, by coming together, and by, and by doing such a beautiful act of uh, bringing the Eucharist in the streets and those, those kinds of things. Does this encourage you as a deacon to see so many people um, getting together? Because as you said, I, I think the world is starving to know Jesus personally, certainly through the Eucharist, but, but to understand that he loves them beyond what we could imagine. How important is that message um, to get out? And does this 
this encourage you to see all of these people coming from all over the area marching together? Absolutely. It's true. I'm a deacon. I mean, I, I went through school. I, I was ordained and I went all through that. And so people think, well, you must be impervious to what happens around you. But it's just simply not true. We're human beings. And when you see other people showing great signs of love and faith and coming together like that, it's a great encouragement to all of us. So God is still at work in the Diocese of Springfield, would you say? God's not done with the Diocese of Springfield, as Mr. Byrne always says. And I love That's that right. line. That's a beautiful line. So again, it's uh, Sunday, June the 2nd at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish. I believe your talk starts at 2, but I know there's, or maybe at 1 o'clock. So if I- uh, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. But I know that I get there early around 1 o'clock anyway to help set up. So we are so happy um, that you're both with us today and that you're going to be with us again on June 2nd. Sharon, we're going to send it back to you. Thanks, Carolee, and we're looking forward to another large gathering in June, on June 2nd in Northampton, giving public witness to our faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to thank Father David O'Farrow and Deacons Michael Forrest and Daniel Pratz for joining us today. We also want to sincerely thank all of you who participated in our special Mother's Day liturgy. We will keep the names you sent in to us in front of the altar again next Sunday. We have a few other events for you coming up around the diocese. Next Sunday, May 19th at 3 p.m., Our Lady of Peace Church, located at 97th Street in Turner's Falls, is hosting an interfaith concert, Cry Out for Peace. The event features music by the Our Lady of Peace singers and Eventide singers, as well as inspirational readings from well-known champions of peace and justice. Admission is free. Also next Sunday, the newly formed group Disciples of Mary, along with the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Committee of the Diocese, will host an outdoor Pentecost celebration at 2 p.m. on the grounds of Jericho, 537 Northampton Street in Holyoke. And coming up on Sunday, June 2nd, the Diocese of Springfield will hold its first White Mass honoring healthcare professionals. Bishop William Byrne will celebrate this 10 a.m. liturgy at St. Michael's Cathedral. All are invited to attend. And for a complete listing of these and other events, visit our calendar on iobserve.org, where you can also get the latest news on the Catholic faith. That's iobserve.org. And join me again next Sunday as we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost with Father Dennis Scavera, pastor of St. Anne Parish in Chicopee. He will be joined by members of his Christ Life Evangelization team. That's next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for the Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. And in honor of Mother's Day, we are replacing our names with those of our mothers and special women in our lives in our credits today. And to all mothers, we send our special greetings. May you be blessed with a happy and healthy week ahead.